Welcome to a conversation with Joe Caruso. His guest today is Justin Breen. Please welcome to the screen, Joe Caruso. Welcome to the conversation with Joe Caruso. Thanks for all the comments, the questions you guys sent. We're gonna have five minutes for questions at the end of this. I've talked to Justin now twice and uh, very interesting guy. I enjoy our conversations. Uh, he's a very bottom line guy, which we're going to talk about today. And I'd like to, uh, can we welcome him in uh, as sooner than later? Because I want as much time as I can have my own. Excellent. Welcome, Justin Breen. There he is. Hello. hello. Hey. Hi. Hi. Um, everything well? Everything's amazing. Okay, good. Um, lots to talk about today. Um, tell us what you do just briefly so we understand it and then i'm gonna we'll, we'll go right off of that so the i want everybody to know who you are sure so i'm a hundred percent simplifier so okay blah 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 simplify so blah 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 simplify and so first company i was a journalist for 20 years created my entire business model based on how pr firms annoyed me for 20 years so saw a problem created solution problem solved successful global company and the second one I just launched, uh, annoyed with all these platforms that let everyone in because it's the highest level. Uh, people don't have time for that. They just want the connection. So creating a, a high price point invite only connectivity platform. So that'll be fun. Just technology for my brain. Now, my new book is on quintessential leadership. And one of the things that I admire about your mind is you like to look at a problem and just mm -hmm drilled down beyond essence, okay? So you've got cost of goods sold in business, you've got a business plan, a strategy, all the basic crap that everybody yeah, does. I don't think about that stuff at all. At totally all? Totally ignore it. Right. Ignore it. So what's quintessential that you found? I love the way you just boil down, uh, okay, it's all about the connection. Yeah, so my brain, again, takes all this complexity and simplifies it. Um, I, you know, that's just how it works. And uh, so I did it to myself. Uh, I actually thought about this discussion, which I don't usually do, but I did for this case because uh, I like talking to you. And this was a good, you know, I was excited to be on this platform. So I, uh, I did this to myself. And these are the five things I came up with. Oh, okay. And, uh, yeah, right. Thanks. Thank you. Um, my wife taught me how to say thank you. Um, and, uh, you know, pretty simple. Uh, I started my first company with zero business background four years ago, uh, zero. Now I have a global company that only works the top people on the planet or the ones that'll make the investment. So, uh, and then the new company will just 100X that because it's just technology for my brain. So, so, um, so how did that happen? Okay, how did that happen? And so last year, I don't care about revenue or profit at all. It's meaningless to me, but most people do. So I'll relate to most people with this discussion. Last year was a record profit total easily. This year, I just passed it this week easily by doing much less work, much less, much less. Um, so, okay, so here are the five things, five reasons why. And that's funny because you already said all this other transactional nonsense is meaningless, but these are the five things that matter. Okay, so one, uh, I have a weird brain, but that weird brain attracted my amazingly normal, loving wife, who's a pediatrician. She's the kindest person on the planet. So one, she's reason number one. Two, I'm in Strategic Coach 10X and Abundance 360 Summit combined to land the plane. Those are about... Uh, 50K total investment a year, easy investment. So being in those rooms with those people eliminates the noise and nonsense. Three, since COVID embracing new technology incredibly quickly, Zoom especially, why are we talking now? We're on Zoom. So embrace Zoom quickly. Three or four, thinking globally. As soon as uh, COVID started, I named my years. So last year was global growth. So global growth, global growth every single day. And so clients around the world now. And then five, uh, raising rates exponentially, doubled my rates again, my firm's rates again this year. And all it does is weed out the schemers and the nonsense and the people that come up with these ridiculous ploys and attracts people that'll just take action to make the investment. 
And so because of those five things, meeting my wife, being a strategic coach last day, 360, embracing new technology quickly, thinking globally and raising my rates exponentially, it's led to more profit already this year than my record profit last year. Solves the problem. It's exactly how your mind works. That is, yep. that is simplifying. You talk about simplifying life. Uh, I talked... Yep. Um, If you have a chance to meet a famous golfer on a golf course, I don't, I don't play the game, but I have professional golfers as clients. Uh, I still don't play the game, but I just help them with their mind. But, um, and a professional walks by, you're just a hobbyist and you say, hey, can you help me with my swing? I'll show you my swing. If he's kind, he might stop and look at it. What you really want him to do is compliment your swing that's your ego but you wouldn't learn anything it wouldn't help you in any way mm -hmm. it, it, what you really want to do is be brutal and say this is what you're proud of and this is your problem and this is why you slice or hook or you know whatever the chunk or whatever these terms are that i don't know i just hear in and, and so part of being an advisor from me, because I work in many people's heads, that's what I ask every time I talk to them, how is your mind today? So you started talking about your mind. You said these five things, my mind, I have a weird mind. Right. Great understanding that you have, mm -hmm. a, you have an unusual, unique mind and everything that you process in the world comes through your mind. So how you chunk things out determines all the results you have in how you process. And you started yep. with your wife. And, and you're not, you, my wife taught me to say thank you. You skip the niceties sometimes, folks. And yet, it doesn't bother you to do that. You just- Why want, would it? Yeah, you want to, let's get to it. I want to talk about it. And yeah, uh, yeah, right. but sometimes you got to tell people things they don't want to hear. Um, you have to say it the way they'll hear it. Your style is, here it nope. is. No, 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 nope. Yep. So directness weeds out nonsense. Yeah, directness weeds out nonsense and attracts greatness. So the only people that understand what I'm talking about are the top entrepreneurs on the planet are the ones that'll make the investment to do so. They're not looking for the compliment on their swing. They just want the better swing and they, they will make the investment to get the better swing. <laughs> it's none of this nonsense that most people are living in. That's my whole point. I don't have time for that. And, uh, and right mindset attracts right network, which creates right opportunities. So I just work on my mindset every day. And that's why I'm in those two groups, strategic coaching, Bonnet 360. I mean, that's, that's my whole point. And it's good investment. Those are big investments, good investments. And again, I'll simplify the simplification. Bigger investment leads to smaller room with more impact. So bigger investment, smaller room, those people are creating more impact. And allows me, allows me to make uh, the biggest impact in the smallest room, which is my family. That's it. All this other stuff is nonsense to me. And uh, I was a journalist for 20 years. You don't get into journalism to make money. And uh, <laughs> you don't do that. So my life's always been about purpose. I mean, now, so now I make a lot more money, which just allows me to do more of my purpose. And the purpose of my life is to be a connecting superhero for every visionary, abundance, investment, mindset, entrepreneur and share their stories with the world. Again, the purpose of my life is to be a connecting superhero for every visionary, abundance, investment, mindset, entrepreneur, and share their stories with the world. So that's, besides hanging out with my family and friends, that's 100% that's of my day. And the beautiful thing is, is that confident genius entrepreneurs are very attracted to that. Uh, regular human beings, small businesses, schemers, they think that's arrogant. And the problem with that is they're just actually arrogant. They're, they're arrogant. Those people are arrogant. Confident people are attracted to other confident people. And it weeds out the arrogant schemers. Yep. It, it's very clear that you like to boil things down to their essence. I remember reading Hegel as a young man, the German philosopher, and he said, struggle yeah. is the law of growth. And so I thought mm. about that. And I said, well, does that mean you have to struggle? And that's not what he was saying. What he was saying is if you're laying under a shade tree in this beautiful summer weather and you're completely satiated sexually, food, water, uh, physically, you're just comfortable. That's fine, but you're not growing. 
Now, if you lay there, if you lay there long enough, your hip will hurt or your back will hurt or you have to scratch something or you have to exert the energy to move, to grow to the next phase. Life is dynamic, it's not static. And, oh, and God, no. so, so when we learn ideas, our goal is to try to boil them down into our world and say, what does that mean to me that's going to move the dime? That's really going to make the biggest difference. And if I can move the dime a little bit, I can move it a lot. 100%. So, so what does I'm the buyer mean? Right. So, so thanks for asking that. The difference between the people I hang out with on a global level, most of my days talking to the world's top entrepreneurs are the ones who will, who will become those people. The difference between those people and everyone else is the, those people take action. They'll do it. They won't think about it. They won't need to feel it. They'll execute. Act to get organized. They'll do it. And so there's no chasing anyone. Um, it's just, I'm just a buyer. So if companies pay my firm, they pay my firm to simplify their message and then share it with the world. They, they pay for that. But I'm the buyer. I only hang out with the people I want to hang out with. And uh, I guess I've been an entrepreneur a little over four and a half, eh, about four and a half years, almost four <laughs> and a half years. And the first two years, I, no one understood what I was talking about because I wasn't in the right room with the right people. Um, and I, you know, I found those groups, I found the right people. And so now I just talk to people who understand what I'm talking about. And when I do meet someone new, they either very quickly understand or they very quickly do not want to talk to me ever again. And that's okay. That's okay because most people try to be everything for everyone. My just, brain, the way I operate, I'm one thing, one or two things for one type of person. That's it. You know, I, I'm feeling you need to be loved. And, and I, I just, it just exudes from you. How do we get your book? <laughs> so it's funny yeah, because, uh, if you're gonna track uh, them <laughs> good that was good i appreciate that that's high level trolling right there i'm proud of you the um so i'm 34 out of 34 on empathy uh strength finders 34 and 33 out of 34 concluders so dead last and second to dead last but for highest performing entrepreneurs on the planet endless empathy why why um because i know what it takes to get to this level Entrepreneurs at the highest level, I haven't met one that hasn't overcome at least one of the following four things. Most are two or three. Uh, some are all four. I wrote an article for Inc. Magazine about this in case anyone's interested. But you, so the that, four things are that one more time what you just said because I missed it. Oh, so I haven't met one entrepreneur at the highest level that hasn't overcome at least one of the following four things. Most are two or three. Some are all four. I wrote, I simplified it with an article in Inc. Magazine. So the the four things are uh, bankruptcy or potential bankruptcy, two, depression, three, the highest level of anxiety you can imagine, and four, likely and or possible traumatic experience as a child or young adult. So most people use those as excuses their whole life. Top entrepreneur in the world, figure it out. Figure it out. How, how and, do we get uh, this article? How do we, how do we find this article, Justin? Uh, if you Google Inc. Justin Breen Hardships, it's, it's on there. I would look for it now, but I don't want you to hear me clicking. But uh, yeah. Okay, so, we got it. We got it. That's enough for. Uh, we got a smart yeah, audience. The, <laughs> yeah, so it'd, it'd be easy to find. But yeah, I mean, you know, my book, thirty things I learned in the company's first thirty months from thirty of the top entrepreneurs on the planet. And okay, then I did it. I just listened to what they said and activated. So each one of those things is a chapter. How how do you spend your day? If you break down, uh, well, first, how long is your day? You say you're working hmm. less. I work zero hours a week, zero, because none of this is work because I'm in, in the purpose of my life 100% of the time when I'm not hanging out with my family, which really is, really is the purpose of my life. But, you know, to, I guess it's hard, uh, you know, I either am talking to top people like you, uh, writing stories, pitching them to media, or then connecting people. That's it. I mean, and again, none of it's work. This is easy for me. This is fun. I it's love fun. it. Exactly. There, I, it, I love it. I, I, that's that's exactly the way I look at it. So, uh, out of the the amount of time that you spend, how much do you spend writing and thinking? Hmm. You know, Joe, um, I've done a lot of interviews since my book came out. That's one of the best questions anyone asked me in a you know in a long time. Why? Because it's really simple question, 
It's really simple. But the key is that how much do I spend time thinking? I think a lot. You a do. A lot. You never stop. I never stop thinking. And again, I put my Colby and print score. For those who don't know, Colby is how your brain operates, your brain strengths, not your personality. I don't care what someone's personality is. I want to know what they're going to do with their brain. Are they going to act? Are they going to overthink and, and never actually do anything? I will think and execute. It's very rare. That's very rare. And then my print scores, my unconscious motivators, uh, the stuff under the iceberg, I'm an eight, three. And so unconsciously my eight is to be strong and self-reliant and three is to succeed and achieve. So I found all of that stuff out by thinking a lot. And then my brain, my top three strength finders are activate, maximize, achieve. So I'll think, but then I will activate, maximize, achieve on the good ideas that I do have. And I love thinking about stuff because the thinking leads to me executing. It leads to me executing. And then I'll execute it at the highest global level possible because of my strength finders. That, that's what will happen. You, you don't suffer fools gladly any more than hypocrites. I remember <laughs> Plotinus uh, in ancient Greece wrote, uh, knowledge without action is dead to us. Ideas to me are meaningless without execution. So maybe that's a new way of looking at it, but that's the same. So, you know, the funny thing is because, see, I love these conversations. Most of my day, whether they're being reported or not, this is what I talk about most of the day, to the top performing entrepreneurs on the planet. And really what, what um, you know, that's why I'm in strategic coach in Abundance 360, because really what it is, is it's like, it's like Plato getting a group of the smartest, for the most part, the, some of the wealthiest people, but really the smartest, highest level of thinkers and executors in a room, whether it's a real room or virtual room. And it's a modern day Plato, modern day Socrates, modern day Aristotle. It's a really fascinating. And you just said it in a different way. You just you just said the same thing. And it, it, it's the great gymnasium. Yeah. Now, that's dude, what it is. Wh where does competition fit into no, this no no so again so uh at the highest level there is no competition only collaboration it's and only so what, think, it's only you play yourself you don't play the field no no if so that's i love man i could talk to you all day so i'm four in competition in my strength finders again i like to think and actually know how my brain operates so i'm four in competition out of 34 um, there is no competition anymore it's all collaboration and, you know, people that live in transactional uh, service world, they're like, oh, you're in PR, very competitive space. No competition, zero, no competition at all. Because my mindset and what my firm does will attract one type of person. It will eliminate everything else. And that's why I'm the buyer. That's my whole point. I'm not competing with anyone. I'm not competing with anyone. I'm playing my own game with my own rules. And that's why I'm excited about the newest company, because it's just technology for my brain. It's just adding value to the people that already get it. And then they'll get the intro, 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 intro. intro. It's, it's so exciting because like you said earlier, there's no stagnation. There's no sitting under a tree and never doing anything about it. It's sitting under the tree and then climbing the damn tree all the way to the top. That's what it is. Yep. <laughs> it, it, now you got me fired up, man. Yeah, fired it, up. It's, it's really fun. It's really a fun conversation. This is me um, sounding excited. Yeah, we have a lot in common. The the uh, <laughs> I, I I learned a long time ago I can't have clients that are wannabes and I can't have clients Ooh, love it love it can't out and I can't have client. I had a woman come in one time. She sat right in this room, and she had just saw, just uh, seen me speak, and she said, uh, "You know, I want to talk to you." And so I had her come in, and she sat down, and she said, "I want to I want to do what you do." So my first question was, what do I do? <laughs> you, Cause you just saw me speak. I, 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 what is your version of what I do? And, and uh, she said, well, you speak because that was her only understanding of what I do. I said, okay. I said, well, why are you here? She goes, well, I wanna make a million dollars. I said, <laughs> why only a million dollars? Why not $10 million? And, and what do you bring into the table? She said, well, I have an interesting story to tell about myself. I said, there's no path. 
to where you want to go that <sighs> I can see in any way, shape, or form. And I said, let me ask you a question. I haven't shared this story with too many people, but I'll share it with you and, and, and our viewers because I just think it was a brilliant moment. And she was, she had an insight. I love when people get an insight. And I said, um, I'm going to put two doors in front of you, both closed. You have to pick one of them. Behind the first door is a million people. And you can positively change their lives in major ways. And they'll never know your name. Mm. Behind the other door is one person. They'll know your name and thank you for the rest of your life. Which door do you want to open? And she said, and? she cried and said, the second door. Oh, for God's sake. And, and I said, God bless you. You're a good person, but you're in this for the wrong reason. That's, yeah, she's winning the wrong game. Yeah, that's winning. It, yeah. It's an I want ego, to make a million dollars. That's ego gratification yeah. game. So that's really interesting because, um, man, uh, let, I'll, I'll say two things based on that. One, that's a really good story. That's, and, and uh, I should write that one. That's a good one. That's a good one. The, um, I was talking to this guy in Ireland. I was talking to this guy in Ireland the other day, really hyped. I mean, and uh, he's like, you know, you know, Justin, uh, I never thought, um, I never met anyone like you before. And I, so I hear that two or three times a day. Okay. And I, I appreciate that. That's great. He said something that was really interesting. I, and he goes, I never thought I would ever meet anyone like you before. I never thought I would even meet anyone. I'm like, oh, that's another, another level. That's a different level. But the level. point is, that's a different level. But the point is, that's the point. The point is, that's the point. So how are you different? How are you unique? And then embracing that weirdness, embracing that weirdness. My and, weird mind, uh, my weird mind. Right. And then people winning the wrong game, they're, they're just winning the wrong game. You know, that's why I don't care about revenue or profit. I led off with this because most people do. And to get started, you need that to live the purpose of your life. And that's why I mentioned those five things. But I don't, to me, that's just ego nonsense vanity. It's, it's, it's nonsense. And I see a lot of really wealthy people and they're miserable because they're just trying to make money and they're not doing anything with purpose. And it's fun because I just get to do what I like to do and what I'm good at. And then I hang out with my family. And all the rest of the stuff's fine, but I just get to spend time with my family. And because I'm the buyer, not chasing anyone. That's it. This is one of the most fun uh, conversations I've had, and I've had, I haven't had a bad one. I appreciate it. And I, I've got to imagine we've got a bunch of questions. So if you don't mind, unless there's something else you want to add, Justin. You know, um, you know, so people understand. Um, you know, my father was 61 when I was born. He was 61. And um, like people like me, they don't just pop out of nowhere. They just, you know, I was born to be this. And my dad was 61. He was, uh, he came from nothing. And uh, he died when I was 13. And he always said the cream rises to the top. So I got 13 years. Well, maybe eight, I, you know, from five yeah. to 13. Cream, uh, cream I, rises I years, yeah. yeah. And so I only parted with the three. You know, he was shot down nine times in combat, became an attorney in the Nuremberg trials, became the president of the insurance company, uh, kept a diary of his experiences fighting in the battle of the Hurricane Forest, very deadly battle toward the underworld war two. And I found that diary after he died. And, oh, wow. Uh, I, right. Wow. Did actually happen? Wow. is meaningless to me unless it happened. So wow. Did I, and then, um, so I write exactly like he does. Boom, boom, boom. So, um, no fluff, no BS, just boom, 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 boom. And so cream rises to the top. So I only partner with the cream that rises to the top or the people that will, you know, get shot down nine times in combat and get back in the point and they'll do whatever it takes, period. And so that's, you know, that's, I'm just born to be like this. So uh, and then I'm a, embracing. that's a hero story on a number of psychoanalytic levels. Uh, yeah. And as you know, I'm, I'm psychoanalytically informed. I'm not an analyst, uh, but that that's a that's a great story. And we do have a sense of self, our own personal narrative. Nothing yeah. in the world. We can't create anything that doesn't fit our personal narrative. So if we don't Correct. examine our personal narrative, we can't change outcomes. And hundred percent, hundred percent, where everything lies. And that's where I. That's my work with people every every day. Uh, okay, let's see if we got time. For, do you have anything else? That was excellent. Ed, addition. 
very, uh, very helpful to understand you. Um, how about questions? Let's, let's see if Mike has uh, questions online for us. Um, one question came in that uh, Justin had mentioned a new business and people are asking, what is that new business? Sure. So um, first company is called Brepic. The new one is Brepic Network. Uh, so high price point invite only connectivity platform. And so uh, my business partner, who I met virtually, he's in San Francisco. He's in strategic coach 10X with me. I've never met him in person, but that's meaningless. So we just launched that. It's very exciting. Very exciting. Yep. That's excellent. Yeah. yeah can you spell that? Uh, Brepic is B as in boy, R, and then the word Epic. So my PR firm is Brepic and then new companies, Brepic Network. It's hundred okay. percent collaborative. Yeah. Very helpful. And um, uh, Mike, what else we got? Um, Mention your family, Justin. What is your uh, tell about your family? Uh, kids? <laughs> <laughs> they like, hey, you spend time with your family. <laughs> what kind of family? So um, if you if you meet my people, meet my wife, and they go, wow, your wife is amazing, and because then they look at me and they're like, how did this happen? Um, cause my wife's the most loving, she's a pediatrician. She's the kindest, most loving, she'd be one on empathy. I'm 34 out of 30. And, uh, you know, that's why I mentioned her first without her, I'm in a ditch somewhere. Um, and then our children, the eight year old, <clears throat> he's a three, two, nine, six Colby. And so for those who know what that is, that's the highest performing entrepreneurial Colby genius score you can, <laughs> you can get. So Shocking. he's a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh and then my uh sweet little seven year old, he's a four two nine four, which is a originator in the Colby world. Three two nine six the pioneer. And uh, again, identifying even my own children as numbers. But uh Jake and Chase, uh, they're the most loving, wonderful uh children. They are incredibly competitive. Uh and um and they have this amazing mixture of my wife's lovingness and then my whatever this is. It's really great to see them evolve. So thankful. That's, that's, a, that's a very interesting thing as a parent to manage that balance so it doesn't offset. I don't manage it. That's my point. I don't manage it. I let them, that's my whole point. That's why I gave them the Colby score. I don't manage anything. I, that's the beauty of being an entrepreneur is that I'm not a manager, I'm a leader. There's a big difference between that. I can barely tie my own shoes. I don't, I don't manage anything. And uh, my wife's a great manager. She's a great manager. Um, uh, so she she does that. And then the best part of being an entrepreneur is that my kids can see this and then they can do whatever they want with it. But most people don't even know this world exists. They don't, you know, even people whose parents are business owners, they're, they're you know, brick and mortar, small company, cost, margin, employee count. And that's fine, by the way. That's fine. That's just not the world I'm in. And so to show them this world at such a young age, they're eight and seven. I'm so grateful for that because I, you know, my dad died when I was 13. I didn't see that. He was an old man with a lot of wisdom when he was raising me. So it's a much different experience. And so I'm very grateful that this life is, is allowing my children to do whatever they want with it and then rebel without exception. They'll rebel and do whatever they want with it. It's, it's I, I really, and I hope we stay in touch. I really enjoy talking to you. I think that, uh, yeah, our minds. We introduce people to themselves with completely different styles. Hundred uh, percent. Yeah, but uh, we do it in a way that they have to say, "Well, yeah, that's me." And then you say, "Okay, well, then make a choice." Hmm. It, once they meet themselves, are you able? Once you meet yourself, to honestly meet. What yourself, are you going to do? What are you going to do about are it? You're going to make a choice, and if yeah. so. I'm the bot. How can we help? But here we go. Let's go. And, and go. that's the most fun part. Jason, this is absolutely a blast. Had a great time. I learned a lot. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. And um, anybody that wants to contact you, they know how to get you. I'm here. Yeah, Justin Breen. Company's called Brepic. So I'm very, very grateful for this opportunity. This was a lot of fun and very collaborative brains for sure, Joe. Really enjoyed it. Really fun. We'll, we'll stay. We have to stay in touch. I look forward to talking to you soon. Mike, thanks Thank you. for the help today. I think that was a great thanks, conversation Mike. with Joe. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. See you next time.
Thank you all for joining a conversation with Joe Caruso and our guest, Justin Bream. Have a great afternoon.